Hello my little DIYers on YouTube, Bundy's Garage, Bundy here. Today we are working on a 2001 Honda Odyssey. We're going to do the uh, front brakes, we're going to do the rotors, and we're going to do the brake pads. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and loosen up these lug nuts right here. Loosen these up, then jack the vehicle up, and then take them off all the way and get the tire off. So let's, let's loosen up these things first. 19 millimeter. Okay, let's do one. Okay, right down here, this is where you want to put the uh, jack stand, or I should say the uh, floor jack. There's a pinch point right here that allows you to jack this thing up, so you'll see it when you go down here. Put it right there. It's a pinch on the body welds. And just keep lifting it up until the tire is off the ground. <clears throat> Alright, tire's up. I won't bore you with this, but just remove all five lug nuts. Okay, get that out of the way. Right here, these two screws hold this rotor in. This screw is fine. This one right here is a little bit worn. Let's see if I can get you in for a closer shot. As you can see, that one right there is a little bit worn. That one right there seems to be in pretty good shape. And then get a screwdriver and try to pound it out. So let me see if I can get that to break loose. That one should break loose, no problem. Oh, that one's already loose. Maybe I'll be that lucky with this one. <laughs> oh man, check that out. Cool, cool beans. Okay, typically, <laughs> and I thought it was gonna be a pain. If it's this worn, sometimes you have to get uh, a Dremel and cr make a, uh, a slot for a standard screwdriver. Um, if it looks like this and you're able to get a screwdriver in there, your best bet is if this is stuck. If this is stuck in there, all you gotta do is take a hammer and hit this, hit the end right here. And while you're hitting it, you, you basically twist the screw, the screw loose. And it breaks it, breaks it free. Uh, for that particular case, I bought these, um, the set of screwdrivers, Phillips and Standard from Harbor Freight. What I like about these is the fact that they're steel. This this whole piece of steel runs right through the through the handle, and you can pound away on the end of this right here. So let me show you that set that I got. I actually liked it so much I went and picked up two of them. But what two four? Six, there's a set of eight in here. Picked up from Harbor Freight. Item number is nine four eight nine nine. Definitely worth it. I think I paid like ten bucks for it. So. And I thought it was going to be a pain to get those screws out, but oh, thankfully they came right out. One thing I'm going to do different when I replace these rotors, I'm actually going to use cross-drilled and slotted rotors. Like that one right there. These are the rotors I'm going to use on the van. As you can see, they are directional. Obviously this one is for the uh, driver's side, since the grooves are cut this way. This one will be for the passenger side. The cool thing about slotted and cross drilled rotors is the fact that when you brake and the brake pad heats up, the brake pad actually releases gases. These gases get trapped on a standard rotor, but with these holes and these slots, the gases are able to escape better and quicker, which allows you to brake faster. So in the end, it's, it's basically more safe, if you could say that. Safer, you know, quicker braking leads to more safety. Um, these were just a little bit more than standard rotors, but it's definitely worth the upgrade. I mean, when I've been wanting to do this on this van for quite a while, and now I'm finally doing it. I got these uh, on. Um, I got these picked. I picked up these from a local warehouse. 
here in Southern California. If you want to know where, you can always email me at bundysgarage at gmail.com. They're also available on rockauto.com, but with shipping and handling, it was a little bit more to buy them online than it was just to go to the parts house and pick these things up. I paid 100 bucks for these rotors, 50 each. So just one thing to note when you do it, this, they are directional. This is for the driver's side. This is for the passenger side. This is a mounting bracket right here. Here's the caliper. There's a pin right here. There's a 14 millimeter bolt on this side. It leads into here and this the caliper actually slides on this bolt. So when I take this out, I'll put some new grease on there. There's also one at the bottom that you need to remove as well. So I'm going to remove those two. Righty tighty lefty loosey. This is a 14 millimeter. Okay, that one's loose. Let me do the bottom real quick. Using the palm of my hand to smack this loose. Sometimes, sometimes they're a lot tighter than that. Sometimes you need to get a breaker bar or combination wrench, combination wrench to open these up. Also, another thing. Right here is a nut. Here's a bolt, here's a nut. Sometimes these get stuck, these these uh, bolts, and sometimes you have to hold this nut so it doesn't free spin on you so you're able to get this bolt out. Luckily, I don't have to, but sometimes you need to. I believe they are half inch, if I remember correctly. As you can see right there, same size, top and bottom. Move, slide this, rock this back and forth. Slide it up out of the way, put it on top. Never let that caliper dangle from the brake line. It's the worst thing you can do. Okay, another thing you want to do, here are the brake pads. Inner brake pad, outer brake pad. Uh, sometimes these, most of the time I should say, these come with this little sensor. When I say sensor, it's a piece of metal that sticks out. It'll either be on the top or the bottom, possibly on the inside or the outside. So just make note when you pull these out where the sensor lies. That way you're able to uh, install it correctly when it goes back on. So I'm going to pull these brake pads out. They just slide out like that. There's the outer one. Here's the inner one. Another thing to note, there's these stainless steel, ra not races, but they're basically uh, right here is what the bottom of the brake pad slides on. So good practice is to actually clean these up. Some of the uh, kits that the brake pads come in come with new ones and sometimes they don't. But if you don't change these out, your best bet is to clean them with a pair, with a pair with some brake clean and then put a little bit of grease for them to ride on. That way they don't get stuck. And just make sure they're in place too. There's one here on the back side. There's one here, here, and here. What you're looking at is the back mounting bracket. There's 17 millimeter here, 17 millimeter there. I'm going to try to break it loose with this 3 8 Stanley Ratchet. Hopefully it works. Got a hammer. You could ruin the socket. I mean, you could ruin the ratchet doing this, but I got this from Walmart and they claim a lifetime warranty, so hey, why not try it? That one's loose. Try this side. <clears throat> that one's loose too. I used to do all. I used to do it all the time when I first started uh, turning wrenches. I had a set from Home Depot. And I did that in uh, I think I ruined one ratchet doing it that way. But uh, if you're in a tight jam or you don't have breaker bars or you just want to get the job done, why not give it a try, right? It's also very important when you reinstall these that you torque these down to specification. I'm going to look in the book, so don't quote me on it yet, but I believe it is 100 foot pounds. Okay. There they are, same size. 
so I don't have to worry about that. Put those off to the side and pull this bad boy straight out. As you can see, that's these are the guides I was telling you about. So some, some of the brake pad kits come with them, new ones, some don't. If they don't, make sure you clean inside this slide right there, some brake clean and put a little bit of grease because that's where the uh, brake pads that's actually ride on, or ride in I should say. Also in here, there's pins. There's a little rubber boot that goes over there. But you're gonna wanna grease these up as well. Just so that you're doing a proper brake job and taking care of everything. So, pull, pull those aside and uh, get those taken care of. Let's do that right now. Okay, before I start putting everything back together, I want to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to spray brake clean inside there, inside there, and there, and there. Okay? And the guides I was telling you about. Inside these guides. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, let that soak in a little bit. I'm going to pull these out as well. Sometimes on these these mounts, the screws are different. The guide pins, I should say. So just make sure when you pull them out, you know exactly which one they which where they came from. Check these boots for any rips or tor or tears. Doesn't appear to be any, so I just pulled that one off. I'm pulling this off completely because I want to be able to clean this up. Put new grease on there. So. Pull that right there. Put that right there. Okay, I'm gonna get a rag, some brake clean, clean these bad boys up. Washing off with brake clean, putting some on my rag here. And I'll go ahead and clean these things up. Get all the old nasty. The old grease off of there. Wipe down the head. Wipe that down. Okay, there's one of them. Stay there. And here's the next one. So I'll go ahead and wipe all that down. Best bet is to wear gloves like I am. This stuff is pretty gross. If you have a nice garage, concrete, best bet is to put a piece of cardboard underneath as well. Because when brake dust hits concrete, it doesn't like to move. So you could you could permanently stain your concrete if you don't have anything underneath it. So one thing I did notice, you probably see it right away too. This pin has this little ridge right here. This one does not, so it's another key thing to remember. And I'll spray some down in here. Try to clean that out. Get most of that off that I can. Try to shove that down there. Get that old grease out. Don't put some new stuff in. Another thing while you're here is clean up the slides on the inside. So clean here, here. Make sure that stays in place. And right before we put everything back together, we'll put some uh, some grease right there. Okay, that's all I gotta do is wipe it down there. Wipe it there. Flip it over, do the same thing. Wipe it there. Wipe it there. Okay. Cool, now double check everything. Looking good, looking good. The grease I like to use, Siliglide. Get this from Napa. I've had no problems with this stuff. This is really good stuff. Let's see. There's the part number for you. 765-1351. Got this at Napa. Comes in a couple different bottles. Size bottles, I should say. This one is four ounces, but this stuff is awesome. So flip that over. Go ahead and get some of this. 
apply this. Right up and down the, the slide, put a little bit on, work it around with your fingers, get a good coating on it. Okay, now bring the boot back in, and I'll stick it back here. The boot, make sure the boot's all the way in. Okay. Do the same for this one. Get that a good coating. Put some inside there. I should have done it on the other one. Coat that down. Bring the boot back into place. Slide that back in. Get the boot to go over the lip. You'll see it when you do this. There's a lip here on the edge of the bracket that needs to go over. So just keep working that until it gets seated correctly. Cool, it's ready for installation. So make sure you clean this up, make sure you clean these old, the old grease off these pins, get the boots securely back on, clean the slides out. And before we put everything back in, we'll grease that up. Go ahead and put the cap on here. Next thing we'll do is go ahead, we'll pull the uh, rotor off and put the new uh, cross slotted and drilled rotor back on. Looking forward to it, looking forward to it. So just wiggle that back and forth. Comes right off. If you want to make it easy, just make note where the two pin or the two holes are. One there, one there. Sometimes you have to use this. Actually, get the rotor off, but that was luckily enough to pull this thing straight out. So put that aside. Let's grab the new one. Remember, these are directional. Okay, this isn't mandatory, but it helps a lot in holding these things down. Go ahead and put the screw back in. That way it holds it in place when you put everything back together. You don't even have to tighten it. All you gotta do is snug it. There it is. Okay, held in place. Cool, cool, cool beans, remember? This is directional, so you wanna make sure that the, the wheel turns this way, so you wanna make sure that these are put into place correctly. Okay, bring this back into place. Torque spec for this is 79. I'm actually going to go up to 80. Torque it down. So what I'm doing here is I'm just starting it by hand. So I just make sure they start. Then I'll come back in here. Do the final torque. Like I said, the book calls for 79 foot pounds. I'm gonna do it to 80. Got my handy dandy torque wrench here. I bought from Lowe's, that's a cobalt. I bought it a long, long time ago. Okay, got that to 80. Ring this down. Do the top one first. There's 80. Doing the bottom. There's 80 there. Double check it. Double check the top. 80. Double check the bottom. 80. Right here on the slides, I told you I was going to use some grease on the back. Use some fully synthetic AMS oil grease multi-purpose just going to take a little smidgen and just put it into the 
into the slide just a little bit not even a lot just a ton that's just a ton just enough to coat it you don't want this stuff to get all over the place just enough to give some good slide motion keep those pads from from binding up like I said just a little bit not a lot all four slides are greased I'm gonna go get the brake pads. Pick these pads up from O'Reilly. Seem to be exactly the same. There's no wear indicator. Uh, I've talked to guys that actually put grease on the back plate here. Don't do that. This shim is actually what's supposed to take care of the noise. Now, I bet I'll get some comments about this, but I never, ever, 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 ever grease these up. Like I said, some guys do, some guys don't. Majority of the guys I've talked to never do. You're just, what you're doing is basically creating a surface full of grease that just attracts dust and muck and nastiness. So your best bet is not to grease those up. So go ahead and slide those into place. Okay, that one's in place. Start with the top. kind of gotta work these things in you'll know when it goes in there you go okay cool double check your pins here next thing you want to do is on the caliper you need to push you need to push the old one back in place so that you have space for the new ones because the new ones are wider obviously wider than the old ones they make special tools for doing this, but you can use a C-clamp in old, one of the old brake pads and push it back. Here's the caliper. You have to push this piston back into place to make room for the new brake pad. Let's clean it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, you're going to get an old brake pad basically and put it in place of the, in front of the uh, piston because you don't want to mar or scar this surface at all. Once you do that, so I got an old brake pad right there, okay? Once you do that, you get a C-clamp. This happens to be a six inch Craftsman C-clamp. I've had, I've had this thing for a long, long time. Another best thing you need to do is uh, on your uh, fill cap for the brake fluid reservoir is you actually want to crack that open. Because it gives space for the fluid to uh, to return into. So go ahead while you're here. Open up the uh, the lid on the uh, brake reservoir. Okay. So the lid on the brake reservoir is open. Got the old pad here in place. Bring this. Open this up wide enough to cover that and you're gonna just basically slowly push this piston back into place just do it slow and steady you have to move this hydraulic fluid back and back and it doesn't move as quickly as you'd like it to but you know just use constant pressure keep it going slowly but surely once the piston is pushed back into place, that's when you can actually install the caliper back onto the mounting bracket. If you see some fluid, some brake fluid leak over in the engine compartment, don't worry, you can always clean that up with water. Brake fluid and water do not mix, and water is the best way to clean it up if anything happens. Just don't let the brake fluid get on paint, because it will eat paint. Okay, slowly pushing that back. You actually feel it bottom out. You can't go any further. Okay, it's all the way back. <clears throat> so get that out of the way. Clean that up a little bit. Get my two mounting bolts. Okay.
Remember these two didn't matter as far as up or down. Or, so I'm doing, I'm just putting these, just putting the caliper bolts back into place. Okay, got the top one started. Got the bottom one started. These actually call for 20 foot pounds. One thing to remember is after you do this, after you put the push the piston back in, you're gonna have a lot of space, or not a lot of space, but basically the braking system, the brake pedal has to push all this fluid back through the hose, back through the brake lines, and back into the piston. So when you get back in into your vehicle after you do this job, make sure you pump the brakes 10 to 15 times just so you get the brake pads to seat right the first time. If you don't do that, you run the risk of going and driving, stepping on your brake, and you're not gonna have any brake. Or you'll have brake eventually, but it'll be a, a delay and you'll kind of freak out. So make sure after you do this job, pump the brakes at least 10 to 15 times before driving, okay? All right, so those are back into place. Calls for 20 foot pounds. So to stay a spec, I'm gonna move this from 80 back to 20. Okay. 20 foot pounds. There's 20. Check 20, 20 there. Okay. So, got the new rotor on, got the new brake pads on. I greased the slides in here. I also put new grease on the, the pins, the caliper pins. I installed this screw here just to keep the rotor in place. I undid the reservoir cap, so make sure you put that back on before you drive and before you pump the brakes because if you don't you'll get brake fluid everywhere so close that up right now actually after you do the other side I'm gonna do the other side I'm not gonna bore you with the other side because it's exactly the same as this side but hey I hope this has helped some of you guys out and I'm not gonna bore you with putting the wheel back on because uh, that's pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory only thing I do is I usually keep the lug nuts at 80, 80 foot pounds when I put it on there. And the key to remember is when you, when you actually tighten these down, you want to use a, you want to use a torque wrench because if you don't and you say you have this at 100, you have this one at 50, and you have this one at 40, then you have run the you run the chance of warping this rotor prematurely, relatively quickly. So. That's another thing you want to make sure you do is torque it down correctly. Next thing I like to do is spray it down with some brake clean. Get all the grease off. And the finishing stuff that they use. Do the back side as well. As well as, as, well as I can. All right, so like I said, make sure you torque these down. Questions, comments, concerns, you can email me at bundysgarage at gmail.com. Like always, I hope these videos have helped you out. If they have, please subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.